I would like to thank you for allowing me the privilege of entering into your homes this evening with the Get in the Go program. I am Pastor Kevin Richardson, and I would like to share with you today from the divine idea of ordinary yet extraordinary. God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And one of the things that God has been speaking to me about and ambition. But the thing that is very important in such an endeavor and objective is what is the focus and purpose of it? You see, we as Christians, we understand that only what we do for Christ has eternal value and purpose, as well as consequences. Now, there are those who desire to live a life of simplicity. They want to just simply live an ordinary life, which is monotoned, boring, complacent, or or even trite, something that is not exciting and doesn't really challenge us or anyone else is a desire of the lives of many individuals. But I believe that God has called each and every one of us to live an extraordinary life regardless to our situation, our circumstance. You see, in the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, the 34th, 34th verse, we read these words. Then Peter began to speak. Now, I really understand, Peter said, that God does not show favoritism. Now, God is no respecter of person. He does not play favorites. So what that means is that what he has done for one, he will do for others. Now, the question is, what is an extraordinary life? And how does one live it? And the answer in simplicity is through an encounter with an extraordinary God. What makes us unique and significant and special to God is when we continually have a divine relationship with him and allow him to use us in ways that go beyond our intellects, our physical strength, our understanding, our knowledge, you see, God is capable of doing exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we can begin to ask or even imagine or think. And so, regardless to how we may assess our self-worth, whether we look at ourselves as being impoverished because we do not possess great wealth, maybe you're on social welfare, or maybe you are in a situation where you're homeless or you're finding yourself in this troubled economy wrestling with just the basic fundamental things of life, attempting to have just the minimal things that constitute survival. But yet and still, in the midst of all of this, God can use you in ways that defy human reasoning. You see, it also goes to those who have great wealth and influence and power, because many times they too, even though they may be able to mask the reality of their feelings of inadequacy or inferiority or a lack of fulfillment by the outward projections of the images of things that surround them, sometimes Individuals in wealthy situations find themselves very alone, very isolated, 
and even suicidal. We know that many times individuals who we would assume should be happy because of all the monetary things that they have acquired in life sometimes take their own lives and we find ourselves puzzled and perplexed by why would people who seem to have everything see their lives as being so empty that they would commit suicide? Well, one thing about God is that when you have God in your life, he says that he came to give us life, and he came to give us life that is a more abundant life, a superfluous life, a life that is full of meaning and depth, not a shallow life, not a life that is merely lived on the epidermis of our skin. Now, one of the things that we need to understand is that we make the decisions of our own volitional will as to exactly what type of life we will live. And many times, we will attempt to justify the choices that we made in life based on external factors. We'll say, well, my plight and my situation is of such because I just simply cannot do anything about it. Well, regardless to whether you are in maximum security penitentiary and you're locked away for over uh, 20 hours a day, you can be used there by God in an extraordinary way as an individual who can intercede and pray for others. You could find yourself in a situation where you're in an orphanage and you may feel abandoned and forgotten, but yet God can use you there to be a witness and testimony to those who are there who feel the same as you do. If you're a Christian, you can communicate hope, you can communicate love in a way that will allow others to have hope. Now, one of the things that you find in the Bible is you, you find ordinary people, everyday people, who literally do extraordinary things. Just think about this. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a teenage peasant Palestinian girl, but yet God supernaturally called her to bring into existence through immaculate conception, Jesus, who was fully God and fully man. And when you look at the Bible, you see ordinary people that God uses to do extraordinary things. There is a story about a man named Elijah, and in the book of James, the fifth chapter, the thick 16th verse, we read these words concerning him. It says, Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. And imagine God empowering a man with the extraordinary ability to control the very elements of nature. There was neither dew, or dew nor rain that came about because he spoke forth the word of God. But there came a point at which he became challenged. In 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, the second verse, it says that Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, but even so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make you like that of one of them. Jezebel was a wicked woman. She was a worshiper of an idol god called Baal. And she had a very vile and wicked control over a region of Israel. And what she had spoken forth concerning Elijah was that he was going to die because of a curse she had sent out. Now, here is a man who God used to stop rain for three and a half years. But yet, when this evil woman speaks forth this curse, he literally runs and hides and becomes suicidal in the midst 
of his panic-stricken state. So this tells us that he was very human, and he suffered from depression and anxiety, and he found himself so fearful that he fleed for his own life and even begged God at a point to take his life. But God is calling us to do great exploits as Christians, regardless to the situation and the circumstance that we are in. In 2 Samuel, the 23rd chapter, the 20th verse, it said, Ben-Hadad, the son of Johandad, was a valiant fighter, and he performed great exploits. He struck down Moab's two mightiest warriors, and he also went down into a pit. And he went into this pit on a snowy day, and the Bible says that there he killed a lion. Now just imagine that. Here's a man that goes and destroys and two of mighty men of Moab, and then also kills a lion in the snow. There are extraordinary miracles that God wants to do today. The Bible says in Acts, the 19th chapter, the 11th verse, God did extraordinary miracles through the apostle Paul. In other words, God did special miracles, things that were uncanny, things that defied human reasoning. And that was done in this sense. Paul literally would allow his body to come in contact with clothing, with articles of clothing, and then he would pray, and the power of God would come on those articles of clothing, and they would be sent to those who were sick and those who were demonized. And these individuals would be supernaturally healed, and the demons would be cast out of them. The evil spirits that were possessing them or oppressing them would leave them. And the various diseases, whatever they were, would be supernaturally healed. This was an extraordinary miracle. And the Bible also talks about how Peter, he would walk through the streets of Jerusalem, and they would literally bring the sick out, and they would put them on cots along the street where Peter would walk because the people would want just Peter's shadow just to pass over them because they knew that if the presence of God that was operating through Peter's life came in contact with them, that they would be healed. And so God does extraordinary things through us. There was a woman who had an issue of blood. And she made her way through a throng of people, through a press. And she knew that if she could just touch the hem of Jesus' garment, that her continual bleeding, her hemorrhaging, would stop. And so the Bible says that uh, she touched Jesus, she touched the hem of his garment, and that her bleeding stopped. But Jesus in the midst of this large throng of people said, who touched me? And Peter said, well, we're in a great press. There are people all over the world. What do you mean, who touched me? Jesus was saying, something extraordinary has happened. The touch of this woman was a touch of faith, a touch of belief. Something has happened, and I know it because virtue has gone out of me. Power has gone out of me. You see, when we believe in the extraordinary power of God. The virtue of God can be released supernaturally through objects. It can be released through clothing. It can be released into it so that those who come in contact with it can receive divine healing. Now, there are those of you who are listening to me today who are paraplegics, they are those who have death sentences from their doctors who've said that your tumor is inoperable. There are those of you who are blind and those of you who are deaf, those of you who cannot speak and those of you who cannot hear. There are those of you who are listening to me who are in the fourth stage of cancer and have been sent home to die. There are those of you who are listening to me 
and you feel that your situation is so hopeless that you want someone to take your life because you see no future for yourself. What I want to say to you today is that God desires to do an extraordinary miracle on your behalf today. You see, the Bible says that all things are possible to him that believeth. You see, God died on the cross, and when Jesus died on the cross, he bore in his body all of our sicknesses and all of our diseases. The Bible says that by his stripes we were healed. And the Bible declares to us that through the shedding of his blood that we not only have the redemption from the curse of sin, but also for the healing of our bodies. Those of you who are listening to me today, no matter what your condition is, God can heal you supernaturally. So those of you that believe, Stretch forth your hands as a point of contact. Touch the screen on your television or on your computer. And I'm going to pray right now that in the name of Jesus, that the power of the Holy Spirit that is resident within me will go forth now and touch your body and heal you in the name and in the blood and in the resurrection power of Jesus' name. Be healed, be delivered, and be set free. If you're mentally insane and, and you're demonically controlled, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. And if you have experienced the power of God today and you've been healed and limbs have grown out, and cancers have fallen off. Know this, that by asking Jesus into your life, by saying, Jesus, be my Lord and Savior, deliver me from sin. I believe that you died and you were buried and you rose from the dead and come into my life. You are saved from the guilt of sin, from the penalty of sin, and from sinful practices. And now you need to make a confession of faith. You need to find a local church. And you need to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you need to begin to grow in grace and in the fear and admonition of the Word of God as you serve and worship there. God bless you, and God be with you.